Despite this unsavoury reputation, the historic pottery region around Shigaraki has, since a 1950s visit by the Emperor, produced pottery renditions of Tanuki in folklore. Some of these renditions are straightforward. Others are more creative, of a less certain origin. The early, fierce, undoubtedly masculine bear-like forms of the Tanuki, like this one, have been universally refined to become a more cuddly, testicularly gifted, sake-bearing, hat-wearing, mischievous party animal to celebrate all manner of social occasions. These fat tanuki figurines have been adopted as mascots of the restaurant and tavern industries and Greek drinkers at the entrances to pubs throughout Japan. Today, most people's understanding of the tanuki is rarely based upon first-hand experience, but on a personal synthesis of the influence of folk stories, old songs and advertising. I interviewed some of the residents of Asaikawa, the second largest city in Hokkaido, and asked them what was their feelings or their impressions about the tanuki. Asaikawa is typical of Japanese rural centres in that it struggles to balance the economics of a historical dependence upon primary industries, an ageing workforce, unpopularity of agriculture as an employment choice for young people, and ever-increasing administrative costs. Today, Asaikawa is a service centre for the surrounding rice, wheat, sugar beet, forestry, and road and dam construction industries. Asaikawa lies at the foot of the Taisetsu mountain range, where this research was conducted. え、ほがらかな気分になって可愛いと思います。うん。え、まず、え、丸っこくて可愛い。しかし、え、時々悪いことです。可愛いと思います。あまり考えたことがないんですが、うん、まあよくわからないんで。和やかにしてくれる。<laughs> this is an anesthetized tanuki. Despite being called the raccoon dog, its only relationship to the raccoon is one of appearance, forged by adaptation to living and hiding in similar habitats on different continents. The tanuki's natural habitat is forested land close to streams. Tanukis have a lifespan of 10 to 20 years. They have short legs. Adults weigh 3 to 5 kilograms in summer. The male is generally 30% bigger than the female and much more aggressive. They have luxurious fur but can suffer from mange. And Tanukis have a strong, unagreeable smell. In winter, Tanukis live in groups of two or three animals in underground dens with a single tunnel of up to 6 metres in length. Compared to other wild canids, the tanuki have small teeth. They are an omnivore by choice, a characteristic that makes them unpopular with local vegetable farmers, wild berries, frogs, small rodents and insects. Oh yes, and remember our old pottery friends from Shigaraki? Well, I just had to ask the obvious anatomically orientated question. Tanuki no kintama no okisa. Chisai futsu oki. Oh! oh. たぬきの大きいを決まってるでしょ。それが昔から。弟の
小さいと思います。大きいです。大きいです。大きさですか。えー、あまり大きくないと思います。<笑>実際は。<笑>大きいと思います。あのしがら焼き焼き屋なんかではこうちょっと大きくあの表現してるけどなんか普通でないかなと思うんですけどもね金玉は、えー、本物は見たことないけども歌では大きいって言ってるんで大きいと思う、うん、And now in a once in a lifetime viewing opportunity you can see that Tanukis have small testicles smaller than a dog of similar size and this may reflect that male and female Tanuki are often But not always a monogamous pair. And finally, our anatomical tour of the Tanuki comes to its last stop the feet. Tanuki feet are surprisingly hairless and small, not at all typical of the feet of an animal adapted for oversnow travel. Winter in Hokkaido is strong, with deep snow cover from December till March and daily temperatures between minus 30 and minus 10 degrees C. In autumn, The tanuki double their body weight by making fat in preparation for winter. The combination of pre winter fattening, short legs, and small unhaired feet, and the observation that tanuki are rarely sighted during winter, all combine to suggest that the tanuki hibernates in the winter. However, let's ask the locals if the tanuki really hibernates. Tanuki wa tomin suru to moimas. Dekinai to moimas. できると思います。はい。手抜きはしない。しない。しない。できると思います。できないと思います。手抜きは冬眠する。できると思います。冬眠っていうのはちょっとわかんないですね。考えてもいないし、ちょっとわかんないですね。冬眠すると思います。So clearly, people's opinion varies as to whether the tanuki can hibernate.、But、what do they mean when they say hibernate? Is there only one form of hibernation? The short answer is no. There are three. And this, negi miso yasai. Very, very good. When the weather is bad, a surprisingly diverse group of animals. Exploit the same law of physics we do when we use refrigerators to preserve food. They lower their body temperature and, as a consequence, slow down the rate of their body's biochemical reactions that consume energy. They also reduce the amount of energy expended on running a body at 37 degrees C. These strategies enable some animals to survive the whole winter without feeding, while for others, this energy saving minimizes calories lost to a cold, hungry night indoors. There are three distinct forms of hibernation that occur in response to cold, short days or lack of food. The first one we will consider is classical or really serious hibernators. These are animals such as ground squirrels, marmots, echidna, and these hamsters. These hamsters have a body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius and a heart rate of about 400 beats per minute. They are physiologically just like you or me, just a lot smaller, and hence the heart rate is much higher. This hamster has been hibernating for 100 hours and has a body temperature of 5 degrees Celsius and a heart rate of 10 beats per minute. During hibernation, energy use is minimized so that no proteins are made and cells cannot divide. Some of the connections in his brain have regressed. His brain makes no brain waves, so by human standards, he is brain dead. He cannot hear or move or see, but he can feel vibrations and monitor air temperature. If he is not touched, He will stay hibernating for about a week, then he will spontaneously rewarm to 37 degrees Celsius and stay at this interbout temperature for about 12 hours before re entering hibernation. This cycle is repeated for the duration of the winter. If he is touched, activation of his sympathetic nervous system coordinates his return from wherever he is to the space time continuum we recognize. To rewarm uses a lot of energy making heat, and at 4 degrees C, Complete arousal takes about three hours. In this bright room at unnaturally warm 25 degrees C, it still takes more than an hour. In the early stages of arousal, the only thing you notice is that respiration rate 
and depth increase. This results because, although you would not suspect it, under his skin he is performing a number of remarkable physiological feats that require a lot of oxygen for his cellular work. Attaching a radioactive label to his red blood cells allows us to image the hamster's blood flow and volume during the early stages of arousal. This reveals a masterly display of vascular control that humans will never achieve, whereby the hamster orchestrates via strong vasoconstriction of blood vessels below the diaphragm to decrease the amount of blood in the lower body as blood warmed by the heart and brown adipose tissue is kept in the head and neck regions. In this way, more important organs such as the brain and heart are warmed much faster than the intestines and hind limbs. In the middle stages of arousal, the muscles in the head and neck have warmed up enough to generate heat by shivering, and so he shivers a lot and his top half gets hot, just as we do with isometric exercise. The last stage of warming involves the release of hot blood in the head and chest into the colder legs and intestine. As yet, incomplete regeneration of neural connections coupled with colder hind limbs means that he is unable to perform simple motor tasks for about 20 minutes after he arouses. In this time, he appears to rest and his brain regenerates synaptic connections. His now recordable brain waves look similar to those recorded during sleep. In the next 12 hours, he will eat and drink a little, rebuild his nest and tidy up his cage before re-entering the next bout of hibernation. The specifics of the second type of hibernation, called daily torpor, are diverse because it is practiced by a diverse group of small animals. In general, when weather conditions turn cold and difficult, many small shrewish mammals, gliding squirrels, opossums, and birds such as hummingbirds, swifts, and tawny frogmouths, to name but a few, forgo hunting, stay indoors, and preserve body fuel by decreasing their metabolism as they reduce body temperature to approximately 25 degrees C. The next day, after the weather has cleared, they rewarm and venture forth to resume their hunt for food. And quickly, just for the sake of accuracy, a bird's normal body temperature is 40 to 42 degrees C, the temperature of a good hot Japanese public bath. The third type of hibernation has to date only been found in the bear and is more correctly called extended torpor. In winter, the bears decrease body temperature from 37 to 32 degrees C for the duration of winter, during which time young are gestated and born to the females. This 5 degrees C decrease in body temperature produces a 50% decrease in the bear's metabolic rate, meaning that fat reserves last twice as long and if all goes well, up until spring. Safe, reversible human hibernation is as yet science fiction. But human tissue can survive for several hours the modest reduction in temperature associated with extended torpor practiced by the bear and cooling of organs and body to this temperature, termed hypothermic cardioplagia, is currently one of the tissue protective procedures used in heart transplants. But extending the duration of cold temperature survival past the current limit of about six hours requires a better understanding of the physiology of natural hibernators. But the bear is a big and dangerous animal, and nobody wants to get eaten whilst trying to do an experiment. So clearly, a more tractable animal model is needed. The tanuki may be such an animal. However, to date, measurements of the body temperature of wild, free-ranging tanuki has never been performed, and the true nature of their overwintering strategy remains a mystery.